One of the many things I like about photography is its ability to tell a story. Yes, perhaps like you, I take what we might call the absolute picture, a picture in its own right that we might put into a competition, uh, such as my own club down at Dorking. Now, talking of that town in the centre of Surrey, that was where I was born. And I was very much aware that something like 2,000 years previously, the Romans had marched through the town on Sting Street. And that is something we can still follow today, either in a car or by walking. Stain Street ran originally from London down to Chichester, a distance of 57 miles. And this is my programme, my story in search of Stain Street for my YouTube channel, which I hope you will enjoy. A land of mists and mystery was how the Romans viewed Britain. Following some initial raids, the Roman army invaded Britain in AD 43 with as many as 40,000 troops landing at Richborough in Kent with divisions in Dover and Lim. It became the province of Britannia, part of the Roman Empire that extended eastwards to Syria. The Roman occupation, which lasted until AD 410, is noted for many things, and for our journey it is their arrow straight roads, many of which are a part of our transport system today. At first they were military roads, linking army camps and later newly built towns. Chichester was named by the Romans as Novia Magus Reginorum, which translates as the New Market of the Proud People. Soon after the Romans departed, the Saxons changed the name to Chichester. After all, they must have found the Roman name a mouthful. It was regarded as the most important town in the southeast at first becoming a military base for the Second Legion. It is connected to Londinium by Stain Street, meaning stone or stony street. It is 57 miles in length and doesn't deviate more than 6 miles from a straight line between the two places. Apart from a couple of short diversions, only at its most northern part, from London to Yule, does the road keep to a direct line from London to Chichester. To avoid steep gradients, Stain Street diverges at two major barriers, the North and South Downs, and passes to the east of Leith Hill. There are other places where later roads diverge significantly from the Roman road, but no one is quite sure of its route through Dorking. Much of it is easily traceable on modern maps. Several of today's roads from London to Chichester follow Stain Street, principally the A3, A24 and A29. Even the southern branch of the London Underground Northern Line to Morden runs underneath Stain Street. At Morden Park is a rare example of a Roman barrow, now enclosed by trees. Whilst the route out of London is shown on some maps, visible evidence of Stain Street as a track resembling anything like its original state is not encountered until the North Downs, not far from Epsom Racecourse, the home of the Derby. Instead of following the River Mole through a gap in the Downs, it contours the hillside with gradients no steeper than one in six, and a route straight as a die. 
Of course, nothing of its initial construction remains. At times, it is no more than a muddy track through woods. There is a lengthy section that is not only straight, but having a width closer to its original appearance. It is listed as a scheduled monument. Shortly before the North Downs at Ural, which was a large Romano-British town, Stane Street skirted the western edge of Nonsuch Park, where Henry VIII built a grand palace. It then turns 23 degrees to the south, close to where the present Church Street is, and not shown again until Woodcote Park, but then only as a dotted line through a golf course. At Thirty Acre Farm it becomes a footpath and crosses the M25 motorway, making four Mickleham Downs before dropping down to Juniper Hall. Much of the route is wooded, with few opportunities for views, until it skirts the western edge of Mickleham Downs at White Hill. Approaching Dorking, Stane Street enters the southern end of the Mole Valley, where much of the land is now given over to a vineyard, and rather appropriately, as the Romans considered wine a daily necessity. At Burford Bridge, Stane Street would have forded the River Mole, and it is believed that the original route is buried somewhere beneath London Road, the A24 dual carriageway. But at Dorking, its course becomes uncertain. I was born in Dorking, a town blessed by its location for being one of the most sought-after areas to live in Surrey. Whilst Denby's Vineyard, a relatively recent attraction, spreads its wings over much of the Mole Valley north of the town, it is the North Downs and Surrey Hills that make the area widely loved, particularly Ranmore, Box Hill and Leith Hill. The composer Rafe Vaughan Williams lived in Dorking for 25 years, and the prominent church of St Martin's has one of the tallest spires in the south, topped only by Chichester and Salisbury. Thankfully, Dorking is not always featured as a tourist hotspot, so we keep its pleasures to ourselves. The route through Dorking has never been established, but it is widely assumed that Stane Street would have left the town via the A2003, that is, South Street leading into Horsham Road for North Homeward. It is also widely thought that Dorking, a Romano-British settlement, would have had a posting station so that travellers could rest and horses changed. There has never been any evidence of one, although Pump Corner, where High Street meets South Street and West Street, is a possibility, likewise Pixham and Burford Bridge. When Waitrose in South Street was rebuilt, excavations were carried out, but it failed to produce anything of Roman origin. South of Dorking, Stane Street enters the Weald, positioned to the west of the current A24, but avoiding the much higher ground of the Surrey Hills, Leith Hill being the highest point in the southeast of England. However, after the Romans had left, the road fell into disrepair, making travel difficult over marshy ground in winter. The Saxons built another road that favoured a higher route which rises to 738 feet at Cold Harbour. Stane Street is indicated as a dotted line on maps until a few miles north of Ockley, where it is met by the A29 that starts at Bear Green. Ockley next. 
the village lies astride Stain Street, the A29, that goes straight through the community. Stain Street is preserved in the naming of the road. There is a 30 mile an hour speed limit, and it is tempting to drive faster. But not whilst I am taking a picture, please, or indeed at any other time. To the casual eye, Ockley has resisted new housing that would be regarded as out of character with the traditional image that attracts many visitors to this idyllic setting. Cottages, many having unique and individual architectural features, border a huge green, the whole complemented by a glorious backdrop, the Surrey Hills, culminating in Leith Hill, 965 feet above sea level and topped by a folly in the shape of a tower, bringing its total height to just above 1,000 feet. After Ockley, and shortly before the road enters Sussex, the A29 deviates from Stain Street, only to rejoin it later south of Rohook, at a junction of roads where the map shows the existence of a posting station, which was investigated by the Channel 4 Time Team programme. Both the A29 and Stain Street remain in harmony through Billingshurst and Polbra, until Hardham, fording the Arran at Polbra, close to where a medieval-style bridge built in 1777 remains today. From here, now confronted by the South Downs, the route that the Roman road builders chose becomes more interesting, as the Weald is left behind and the South Downs National Park is entered. It might be thought that the route would have been via the Arran Valley, but that would make it longer, not helped by a meandering river and marshy ground. Instead, the route headed directly for the hills, the bee line adjusted towards Chichester. Before leaving Hardham, exercise a detour to St. Bartolph's Church, located in a side road adjacent to the A29, which obviously wasn't around when the Roman legions passed by, but the 12th century war paintings are well worth the diversion. They might have faded a bit, but a well-preserved and naked Adam and Eve are clearly visible. In the shadow of the Downs is Bignor Roman Villa, a short distance from Stain Street, a residence of considerable importance due to farming and the high quality of agricultural soil, not to mention easy access to Chichester. It is open to the public, and inside are some of the finest mosaics in the country. They date from the 4th century. Stain Street would have gained the top of the South Downs via Bignor Tail Wood, a spur extending from the main ridge. At the top is a signpost, confirming that you have not lost your way, and although a replica, I doubt it is authentic in any way but worth a shot. There is also a car park at the end of a narrow lane leading out of Bignor Village that ascends the downs on a route close to, if not on, the Roman Road. Like the North Downs, the long descent from Bignor Hill over the Downs to Earthen Wood is one of the best preserved sections of Stain Street, where the flint surface is exposed and the trees cut back to the boundary dishes.
Novia Magos is now within sight. Stain Street skirts Hanukkah Hill, now topped by a windmill and worth the diversion for wide-ranging views along the South Downs and to the coast. Although founded around 1117, Boxgrove Priory is also worth a visit, but the current church is much later in origin, but the ruins of an earlier building remain. The military phase at Chichester did not last long, and by AD 75 it had become a market town. Its importance justified the building of a magnificent Roman palace at Fishbourne to the west of town, and is open to the public. It probably covered more ground than it does today, now part of a housing estate extending across the main road down to the sea at Chichester Harbour. Its new cathedral was founded in 1075, having moved from Selsey, the diocese today extending over much of Sussex. Chichester is widely recognised as having a vibrant festival theatre. It was opened in 1962. For lovers of beautiful country, the South Downs National Park is just up the road, and Chichester Harbour, a series of inlets popular with the sailing fraternity, was designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty in 1964. Chichester has much to offer, and the Romans must have known something in choosing this location as an important base. It makes a fitting climax for our journey through time from Londinium.